Oh, there's a swipe. He come back. Go take it. Hit it. Got him. Oh, nice, nice brownie. Lovely brownie. Lovely brownie. Look at that, eh? He hit that. He hit my little micro minnow. Blackberries are sharp. I'm getting too old for this, I think. I'll be able to get out there with a bit of luck. Alrighty, I'm going to fish this hole from well back. Rather than just barging up there to the foot of the hole where I can get a cast easily, I'm going to get a cast from well back just because the water is so low and clear and I don't want to spook every fish in the creek. So, Oh, there's a swipe. He come back. I'll take it, hit it, got him. Oh, nice, nice brownie, lovely brownie. Lovely brownie, look at that, eh? He hit that, he hit my little micro minnow. The striped tiger micro minnow, he hit it three or four times. I saw him swipe it, and he's a lovely fish. Got a really quick mobile phone pick, then I'll put him back. That was quite exciting, don't kick. Oh, well, maybe I won't get a mobile phone pick. Yes, I will, he's still. Here we go. There he goes. I've got my photo. And off he goes. Look at that. Beautiful. What a lovely brown trout. Now as I said, I stood right back here. I made my cast from right back here because had I walked up to the point where the water meets the sand, I most likely would have spooked that fish. So by casting from further back, it's allowed me to just have a little bit more stealth about my approach, if that makes sense. Ouch. Sharp bastards these things are. Look at that down there. That is quite fresh Samba deer poo. Samba deer poo looks a little bit like a little bean sinker sort of shape. And it's very fresh, it's still wet. I'm guessing most likely last night. Oh, look at that. Tree had to shot down that rapid. There he goes. He <laughs> was quite a nice fish. I'm guessing maybe 30 or 35 centimetres. He's come out of this bit of a pool, shot down over these rapids, and shot down through there so fast that you could barely see him move. It's incredible how fast that fish moved through all that stuff, almost as though it wasn't there. That's just fascinating. fish. Oh, there he goes. Here he comes. Take it, take it, take it, take it. Here's a good 40 centimetre plus trout, this one. Beautiful big brownie. Come on, you know you want it, big boy. Wherever you went. Look at these black cockatoos. This is just incredible. I've got a trout here of around 40 centimetres following my soft plastic in. I've got black cockatoos no more than 10 or 15 metres away from me. Love it. He was a nice fish. Where did he go? Got 
got him. <laughs> oh, he done him. You bugger. I think he might have been a little rainbow, actually. Bugger. I wonder if there's another one in there. I doubt that he'll come back. He uh, had far too much weight for far too long. The little one. Got him. That's a red fin, look. <laughs> look at that. The first one was a trout. I think a little rainbow trout. The second one is a little red fin. Can you believe it? <laughs> Oops. Dropped him. Just mixing it up, folks. Mixing it up. <laughs> Here we go, another one. Another little red fin. <laughs> wow. I've come up here to the hills chasing trout. And I've caught two little weeny redfin, as well as one brown trout, and now I've lost another little rainbow trout. It's a mixed bag kind of a day, folks. <laughs> Redfin hat trick, three redfin in the one spot. No, that wasn't in three consecutive casts. I put my thumb in his mouth and do the bass hold. Look at that. They're actually a very pretty little fish, aren't they, with their stripes and their red fins? <laughs> Big tiger snake, or little tiger snake, right in front of me. What a gem, have I got my phone here? Look at this tiger snake here. If there's one thing I really look at him, he's trying to get away from me. A snake chased me, a snake chased me, a snake chased me. I hear it all the time. I was chased by a snake. I was chased, the snake chased me, I tell you what, if snakes chased people I'd be dead now because at 130 kilograms there's no way I know I could outrun a tiger snake through all that crap. <laughs> Something swiping it really fast. He must have swiped at that nice little rainbow trout. He must have swiped at that no less than a dozen times that fish. Each cast, look at that. Quite a pretty little rainbow trout. Each cast, let's see a flash of silver, then another flash of silver, then another flash of silver, then another flash of silver. There buddy. So I've got one nice brown trout, one little rainbow trout, and three small redfin. All on the strike tiger micro you know. Now I'll tell you why I've chosen this particular colour, micro minnow. This is green with red flake. And there's a very good reason why I've, cho why I've chosen this colour. And that is because I forgot to bring the black ones. <laughs> this time of year, late summer, heading into autumn, there's a lot of black in the environment. There's a lot of black beetles and black bugs. And most of all, there's a lot of crickets. Trout hone in on all those black things, particularly the crickets. And this time of the year, for the next month or so, my favourite colour for trout fishing is black. And I left the black at home, but the green with the red flake is doing a good enough job as it is, so I'm very lucky. Rightio folks, curiosity killed the cat. I am curious to know what this little bit of water here holds. But I know that if I go to there, then I'm going to want to know what the next bit of water is like. And I'm just going to keep going and going and going till I get to a point where I think, gee, the car's a long way away now. So I need to right now say, okay, I want to know what's up there, but I'm not going to. I've had enough. I'll leave that for next time. It's time to pack up and go home. I've had a wonderful time. I've only been here a couple of hours. I've only actually landed two fish, that lovely brown trout earlier and that little rainbow trout. And I've landed three small redfin. 
I've landed five fish, but only two of the target species for today, which was trout. But that's okay. I've had an absolute ball. I've managed to see quite a few fish following. I've seen a few fish just sitting feeding. Some quite nice trout. A couple of nice browns I saw earlier. There's a few trout about, and now it's the end of summer. We are now into the last week of February, which means that things are starting to cool down. And I can already feel a noticeable difference to the water temperature as I stand in this stream today. A few weeks back we had day after day of 38, 40 degrees and then hot nights that didn't get below 20 or 25. They've gone now. We're still getting a few 30 degrees, mainly 30 to 32 degree days. And throughout March we might get a few 35 degree days. But the thing about it is the nights are a lot longer, allowing the water to cool down more before the heat hits it. That leads to cooling water. The water's already cooling, the trout are already starting to become a lot more active and over the next four to six weeks I think we are going to see some fantastic trout fishing here in northeast Victoria. Thank you very much for watching everybody. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, hit the little subscribe button at the top. Beside that button is a little bell. Make sure you hit that and that way that tells YouTube to send you a notification each time I upload a video. And believe me, I do upload frequently because I just cannot get enough of the outdoors. I love it.